handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Chester Racecourse here on Thursday. It is the 5th of May, 2022. Going to look at almost all the races on day two of the May Festival from Chester. But before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kit 5 for more selections for racecourses around the world. And join me tomorrow for some more Chester previews. Also tomorrow for my Kentucky Oaks preview. And I think you know something about Saturday. We have the Kentucky Derby here stateside. So hopefully join me for that set preview. It's going to be an excellent weekend of racing. So join me for that. But we have seven races on the program. We're going to look at all of them except the 415, the sixth race. It's a very tough main race, and we're just going to skip that over. So we'll start with the first race, the 130 from Chester, which is the ICM Stellar Sports Handicap. It's Class 2 Handicap, going for a purse $55,500. Race for four-year-olds and upwards. Horses rate 86 to 105. Ten horses are going 1,000 meters or five furlongs on the Chester turf course. I'm going to take the number two horse here, Sunday Sovereign, as a top selection. Let's go 287 in the Tri-Cash Trifecta. 287 Tri Cash Trifecta. Top selection in two horse Sunday Sovereign. Five year old by Aquano. Rob Hornby's on this one for Tim Easterby. The horse's most recent out came 16th of April at Musselsboro. Five rolls yielding ground class two handicap. And the horse finished eighth by five three quarter lengths. You know, just had a little bit of a wide trip that day. Can never get the good turn of foot from a stog in position. And it just wasn't his day to win off the bench. Coming here quicker round back to Chester where the horse had some success last summer. I'm going to give this horse another shot. Two back at Doncast, 23rd of October, soft ground, five wrongs and a class two handicap. He finished six by four and three quarter lengths. And again that day, he didn't break that well. He was a quarter horse to the front end that day, and that cost him late because he kind of hit the wall. It just wasn't a recipe for success there. And then a Catterick on the 16th of October in yielding ground. Five rungs and a Class 2 handicap. He finished second by one quarter lengths that day. He sat back early. He really closed up well late on a track that does not play towards closers. But I didn't think it was a half bad race. And then an air and a Class 2 heritage handicap. He finished 24th by 20 lengths and just really showed absolutely nothing late in the race. Completely got swallowed by the horses. But his most recent local race of going 1,100 meters at five and a half rungs in August and a Class 2 handicap, it was a success. He won by a length that day and he really had a great track position he quickened up nicely and got the job done he's drawn well today he get, should get a good trip and uh, I, I like him a lot so we're going to take him here along with the eight horse soul seeker andre adazini's on this one his horse has some forwardly pace also um you know his most recent races haven't been half bad um he goes up on firm ground he's you know he's gonna have to overcome a wide poster but i think he has the speed to do it at 10 to 1 I'm definitely using your place pot but to recap my selection for the 130 the first race from chester let's take the two horse sunday sovereign give kudos to the eight horse Soul Seeker, 287, Tri Cash Trifecta, 28 in your place pot. The 205, the second race from Chester, it's Deep Ridge Handicap. It's Class 2 Handicap, going for a purse $55,500. Race for three year olds only, horses rated 81 to 100. Nine horses are going 1,600 meters or a mile on the turf course. I'm going to take the number six horse here, City Runner. Let's go 637 in the Tri Cash Trifecta. 637, Tri Cash Trifecta. Top selection, six horse City Runner. Three year old Colt by Caravaggio. Jamie Spencer's on this one for Brian Meehan. The horse's most recent mountain came 22nd of April at Sandown. Good ground, one mile, a class two handicap, and the horse finished second by half length. He was with him early on. He had the lead, but then he just got caught late, just slightly green that day at 16 to 1. He outran his odds, but he just couldn't get there late. Coming here, not the world's toughest class two handicap, drawn a lot better. Um, you know, second off the bench. He should really improve off that last race. Two back at the 25th of February at Wolverhampton, 1,800 meters of and a class three handicap he finished second by half length that day and again he was on the drive on the front end he, he quickened up nicely but then he just kind of got caught late by a horse that just had a little less weight than him what can he do he just couldn't keep up but he still ran his heart out there on the front end and then settled on the ninth of january seven prongs on a class five handicap the horse went by three quarters length and he really put on a show that day he stalked he got the lead quick enough nicely another very easy race since putting on the headgear on him he's really become a better horse and he's really been improving coming here to chester today making his debut locally i think he's another horse that should really be on the improve along with this three horse here koi koi um david pro Roberts on this one for Andrew Balding. Most recently in a Newberry in the fall, seven furlongs in a class for novice race. He won by six and a half lengths. And on the front and all throughout, he really put on a show that day. Before that at Ascot, he really just couldn't get a good trip from his tracking position. But he's another horse. He's on the up and up. He should get a good trip here today from the inside. And nine to two, definitely using your place pod. But to recap my selection for the Deep Bridge Handicap, the second race of 205 from Chester, let's take the six horse City Runner. Give kudos to the three horse Koi Koi. 637 Tri Cash Trifecta. Let's go 6 3 in the 
place pot the third race the 240 from chester it's the d stakes it's listed stakes for class one horses going for a purse of one hundred nineteen thousand five hundred dollars this race is for three-year-olds here we have six possibly derby trial horses going the distance of ground of two thousand meters or a mile a quarter on the turf course i'm gonna take the one horse cresta as a top selection let's go one six three in the tri cash trifecta one six three tri cash trifecta top selection one horse cresta this three-year-old colt by new bay brian martin mead trains this one tar marquan gets the mount his most recent race at um, Newmarket in the field and stakes in April wasn't a success at all. Over the mile and the eighth in that race, he finished fifth by five three quarter lengths. He was very rank early on. He wanted to go, but Tom Marquand had a stranglehold on him, which cost him. He never quickened up. He never showed anything that day. He completely hit the wall. It just wasn't his day to win. Today, I would like to see him just let him run. Let him run on the front end and go away with it, because I think that's going to be his best chance of winning. The longer trip should suit him well um, than he was getting in his two-year-old campaign. His two his final race of the two-year-old campaign it came at Newberry, 23rd of October, seven furlongs in the Group 3 Horace Hill Stakes, where he finished second by one half lengths there, and he just kind of stalked. It took him a little bit of time to get going, but he ran decently there. Uh, it was an improvement on the race before it came to the Group 3 Tattersall Stakes at Newmarket over the seven, where he finished fourth by four lengths there, and he got beat by Modern Games, went on to win next start out in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and uh, a head-scratcher before the race, but, um, it's, you know, almost a, eight months later, it's still a head-scratcher, uh, but... Um, this horse finished fourth by four lengths there in the Tattersalls, and he just really never got going there. Those were a little slightly better horses. Uh, and then the Class 4 novice race at Leicester over the summer over the seven on yielding ground. He won by three quarters in length. He didn't break that well. He had a trouble trip earlier on, but he settled well. He quickened up, and he got the job done. After all said and done, it was a decent race. He's definitely been on the improve. Should like them on a quarter. And like I said, Tar Marquand should just let the horse run because that's going to be his best chance to get to the winner's circle today. So we'll use him along with the six-horse star of India, Ryan Moore on this form for the Coolmore Group and Aiden O'Brien. Most recently at Newmarket in the Craven, the horse finished fifth by six and three quarter lengths. He was with them early on, but just wasn't staying the mile. Also wasn't staying first off the bench. Coming second off the bench, mile quarter where he could slow it down. I think the horse could really run a good race. I don't think he's going to get an easy race as the horse yesterday, as the O'Brien Moore horse got in the um, in the future yesterday. But, um, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if this horse um, wins here today two to one. I definitely use in your place pod. But to recap my selection for the two four the third race from Chester. It is the D Stakes. Let's take the one horse Cresta. Give kudos to the six horse Star of India. One six three Tri Cash Trifecta. Let's go one six in your place pot. The fourth race, the three ten. It's the Group Three Orman Stakes. It's Group Three event for Class One horses going for a purse of hundred fifty thousand dollars. Race for four year olds and upwards. We have ten horses going twenty six hundred meters or a mile five eighths on the turf course. I'm gonna take here the number five horse here, John Leaper. Let's go five six three in the Tri Cash trifecta five six three tricast trifecta top selection five horse john leaper for a colt by frankel ryan moore's on this one for ed dunlop the horse's most recent outing came at kempton and the um Floodlit stakes back in the first November of a mile and a half on the poly track. The horse finished eighth by three and a half lengths there, and really, you know, just another horse strangle hold on him. Adam Kirby just should have let the horse run. Strangled hold on him. He never quickened up. He never got the job done. It wasn't the day to win. Coming here, getting Ryan Moore back up, who could let the horse settle early on over the longer trip, which I think he likes. I think the horse could really improve off that run last time out, which I, you know, it just wasn't a great ride by Kirby that day. Before that, the horse ran at Newmarket. In the um, in the Godolphin Stakes uh, over the uh, mile and a half there, uh, and the horse finished third by three and three quarter lengths that day. He just kind of stalked. The winner just really had that better turn of foot than him. This horse just needed that extra turn of foot there. Like I said, maybe a little longer should suit him well. And then a long chomp on the fifth of September and the Group Three Prix de Prince or the Orange over the um, like I said mile and a quarter. The horse uh, finished um, seven by five and a quarter lengths and off the bench. The horse really needed the race. Never quickened up there. Uh, and then sand down a mile. And a quarter and listed stakes, the uh, gala stakes, and the horse finished third by four and three quarter lengths again, just kind of stalked and never quickens up. Um, this horse, like I said, just wants to go the longer staying trip. He's going to get a bit of it today, which should suit him well. He should settle well, and I think he could really, really good race. If you run a race like he did last summer at uh, in the fairway stakes in Newmarket uh, last um, May, he could definitely win against these horses. He won by one three quarter lengths and really put up a good number that day, uh, you know, going fast. Ten to one, 
we'll use him here along with the six horse uh, Mandub. Um, this four year old gun by Farrar. Sean Levy's on this one for uh, Brian Meehan. Most recently, they ran the horse at, Royal, at Ascot in the Noel Merla Stakes with the horse finished third by 11 lengths. I do think off the bench on the wet ground, he really just couldn't get a good tracking um, trip that day and he couldn't really just get a good handle of the ground. But the race before in the Bahrain Trophy, he lost to Yabir that day, uh, finishing second by two and a half lengths. Again, he was with them early on. He just couldn't get the, the better turn of foot like Yabir had, but he ran decently there. And then a Haydock before that in early June in a class four novice race, winning by three quarters length. He stalked you quick and up nicely and got the job done on fast ground. He's going to see similar ground today. He should definitely stay at 10 to 1. Another shot here. It's a very, very wide open race. You could give a few ways in this race. I think Alanook, the three horse, um, similar Gillen by Camelot, he's a veteran, but he, I think he could win also. He hasn't won since last July where he won on soft ground at Haydock, but he always runs these sneaky good races. A little bit of a longer trip should suit him well. Um, a decent place here in the fall. 6 to 1. With a good post run, he's another horse to use in your place pot. Because, like I said, this is a very exciting race, and uh, it, it, you're going to see a good number come up uh, in this race. So, um, I definitely go a few ways. But to recap my selection for the 310, the fourth race from Chester, it's Group 3, Ormond Stakes. Let's take the five horse John Leeper, give kudos to the six horse Mandub, and the three horse Alanuk. Six, <laughs> five, six, three, tri cash, trifecta, five, six, three, all in the place pot. Like I said, did I mention? Very wide open race. <laughs> The fifth race now, the 340. It's the Boodles, Randance, Handicap. It's class three handicap going for a purse, $35,500. Race for four year olds and upwards. Horsey rate 71 to 90. We have a field of 14 horses going 2,000 meters or a mile a quarter on the turf course. I'm going to take the 11 horse Fairmac as a top selection. Let's go 11, 7, 13 in your tri cash trifecta. 11, 7, 13 tri cash trifecta. Top selection 11 horse Fairmac. We're going to by Lethal Force. Franny Norton's on this one for Charlie and Mark Johnston. The horse's most recent out came 19th of April at Epsom, a mile a quarter in the Great Metropolitan Handicap Class 2 event, and he finished fifth by 13 lengths. You know, off the bench, he was with them early on. He had the lead for a split portion, but just couldn't stay the trip late. Settling down to a mile and uh, a quarter here today, speed favoring track. Franny Norton knows his way around this course. I think he could really run a good race here today. His debut, uh, his um, four year old debut came on the 14th of April, the rip and soft ground. Model quarter in a class three handicap, and he finished third by four and a half lengths. He was with them early on, he just kind of hit the wall late, just wasn't 100% cranked, maybe need the race. But I've seen worse races for him. And then at Nottingham on the yielding ground at the end of October, a model quarter in a class three handicap, he finished fourth by seven lengths that day. And you know, he, he was with them early on, and he, he just couldn't stay the trip on soft ground. Before that, on fast ground at Haydock, uh, mile five sixteenths in a class three handicap, he finished second by two and a quarter lengths there. And I thought, you know, he was with them early on, he got caught late but he still ran his heart out he has a lot of speed which i think should hold up here he's run here in the past to some decent sneaky good races i'm gonna give him a shot here um you know the, the race in august where he placed that day um wasn't bad at all if he was a little bit closer um he's closer in the, in the subsequent races but um if he was closer locally he probably would have won in august but um what can you do um you know at 15 to 1 i'm gonna give him a shot here because a third off the bench he should really improve um watch out for the seven horse here pride of Priory uh, for Tom Marquand. His races in the fall haven't been half bad. Coming here with a good poster, another forwardly paced horse. Could definitely win. I definitely use in your place pot. But to recap my selection with 340, the fifth race from Chester. It's the Boodles Rain Dance Handicap. We're going to take here the 11 horse Fair Mac and give kudos to the 7 horse Pride of Priory. 11 7 13 tri cash trifecta 11 7 in your place pot now the sixth race the 4 15 it's a very wide open two-year-old race you could probably go a few ways and uh, i have a rule you don't really i don't really look at two-year-old races before royal ascot in the uk maybe at the end of the month from that sand down fixture but uh we're gonna skip over this the sixth race and head over to the nightcap the 450 the seventh race from chester which is the Roofing Consultants Group Handicap, Class 3 Handicap, going for a purse of $35,500, race for three-year-olds only, horses rate 71 to 90, seven horses are going the distance of ground of 2,400 meters or about a mile and a half on the turf course. I'm going to take the one horse, win your neck in. I'm going to go one, two, six in the tri-cash trifecta, one, two, six, tri-cash trifecta, top selection of one horse, win your neck in, three-year-old colt by decorated knight, James Doyle's on this one for David Evans, the horse's most recent 
59 and came 12th of April at Newmarket. A mile and a quarter in a class three handicap, and he finished seven by 50 length, 15 lengths there, or excuse me, 10 lengths. Can't read. And uh, that afternoon, he just kind of stalked, but could never get the good turn of foot. He desperately needed the race there. Coming here to a mile and a half where he could slow it down on the front end with a very good post draw, I think he could really run a better race than he did last time out. 20th of October was his final start as a two year old at Newmarket. A mile and a quarter in a class two handicap, and he won by length at 83 cents a dollar. Everybody in his mother knew he was going to win that day. He stalked, he got the lead, and he got the job then. Not the flashiest victory, but it was a very good victory, especially at 83 cents a dollar. And that Salisbury mile in a class four novice race at the end of September. He won by three and a half lengths that day. And again, he, he was with him early on, stalking, slowly moved his way up, and got the job done in hand. A very good hand ride late. And the Salisbury before that, one mile in a class five novice, when he, finishing second by a nose that day. Um, you know, again, he, he runs his better races on the front end from a tracking position on or off the just on or on or just off the lead um you know he he, he uh he, but he just couldn't get there late there coming here at 10 to 1 with a good forwardly pace i think he could win here the two horse temple of our team is our, our artemis um i think is your second likeliest winner another horse his race at leopardstown most recently was an improvement off the race before which came at navin in october where he never really did some running he's really been on the improve it wouldn't surprise me if he breaks his mane here today the o'brien horses um on the, this weekend have been running decently so uh watch out for them uh uh, but to recap my selection for the 450, the seventh race from Chester, let's take the one horse, win your neck in, give kudos to the two horse. Temple of Artemis. Uh, I'll go one, two, six. Try cash trifecta. One, two in your place pot. So good luck to all. And please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kid 5. Good luck, everybody.